I know the feeling that from a young age uh, that I also had this feeling that I knew what I wanted to do. Um, I know that it feels great to have some kind of purpose, but eight years is very young. It's like most kids, you know, they're just kids. And to already be knowing what you want to do the rest of your life is, uh, is very impressive. I have to say, I didn't know anything about you know, the, the, the professional life as a musician. I, I don't come from a music, musician yeah, um, family, family and totally. I really didn't have any plan of how it's going to look like. It just was a feeling inside that I want to do this and I want to really become a lot better. <laughs> yeah. That means you still had to do normal school yes. um, while you were doing this musical life and... At what age did you enter the conservatory? Um, after I finished my school, we call it baccalaureat yeah. in, in French. In, in German, it's abitur. And um, What age is that? I, I finished when I was 17. Okay. And I entered when I was 18. So it was like exactly at the, the, the part where I was having my 18th birthday, let's say. <laughs> so approximately 10 years later now, you have finished bachelor, master's and post master's. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe you can tell me what was for you. I'm curious because I have my experience in the conservatory in the Netherlands and in Amsterdam, but there were things that I liked, but there was also things I didn't like. Could you tell me both sides of the story of your experience studying in a conservatory? <laughs> yes. I, Let, let's I... start with the good things <laughs> <laughs> i enjoyed the whole study phase a lot i would say um even though it was sometimes a little bit difficult to know what you're actually doing <laughs> but um i think the way it is organized in germany or let's say in stuttgart i don't have experience with other universities but stuttgart um it was very free it was up to you what you want to um, study and how much you want to study. Yeah. Of course, there are some um, lessons and courses that you have to do, but yeah. but all in all, you were pretty free. Um, and so I spent a lot of time in practicing, and that was my f main focus. Um, and especially in the beginning of my bachelor studies, you know, you have to do a specific amount of other courses and you have to do music theory and so on and so on. But I feel like I was a little bit too young to understand how important music history is for me, how important music theory and all the details is going to be. Until I understood it more and more, um, there was no duty for me anymore out of the study to actually go into these things. So yeah. I had to do it myself, basically. I recognize this because I was also entering at 16 yeah. and there were students that were like 25, 30 mm. there, kind of felt a little bit out of place in a sense, but <laughs> also at that age, you know, you don't know much of the world and mm. your interests are just somewhere else, obviously. Yeah. And music history for me was also like, okay, I, I, I it's good to know, but it was not really you know, of such importance because yeah. I just didn't understand the connection. Exactly. Now I'm super interested yes. <laughs> because it's important to make those connections. So. It was very difficult for me to stay concentrated. I was never really good in history also in school back then. But, you know... What, what were your favorite topics and what were your least favorite? So history, least favorite, what did you like most of the... In school? Yeah. Or in, like in university? In, in, uh, in the conservatory, yeah. In the conservatory. Um, there was, like next to my usual classes with my professor, which were definitely the ones where I learned the most. And yeah. he, he was the one that I worked the closest with. And um, so there is a class that is called Analysis and Interpretation for Pianists. Yeah. And uh, there was a professor, he is extremely knowledgeable about music, music theory. And together with uh, another professor in piano, um, they both basically did this this class with us. So there were like, I don't know, up to 10 pianists, um, students sitting there together with these two professors and everyone had to uh, present 
a piece most of the time it was something that they are playing or studying at that moment and they had to analyze it in harmonics melodic uh, rhythmic yeah. every per parameter that you can analyze in in the music score and out of the analysis you have to explain your interpretation and different ways of interpreting it and this was really a moment that you know changed a lot in my head um and it made me realize how important music theory is. Yeah. Um, even though maybe you don't have to know all the perfect um, harmony terms. And and yes, you, you, you should know how to analyze the harmonies, but you don't necessarily know, need to know the term for it. Like You don't yeah. necessarily have to talk about it with other people, but you have to know for yourself, this is special. Yeah. And for that and that reason, this is special. And how do I bring this out to the audience in the end? The audience doesn't need to know what a Neapolitana, a Neapolitana is, but <laughs> yes, I, I totally. I think this. I can. Yes, I definitely understand this. Uh, maybe in Germany it's different, but I had some fellow students who were doing two studies. They were studying conservatory and medicine. Like it's pretty crazy. But did you have other subjects or in the university, or it was just music related and? Uh, performance and theory and and all these subjects or did you also have other subjects um in conservatories yeah. itself we only do music yeah. and there is nothing around it that exactly. you cover for me personally i decided to study information science okay. parallel to music yeah at another university it was um and actually the reason why was mainly because of my parents they they are not musicians and they didn't know how to support me in this field yeah. and the only thing they knew was this is not a secure life uh it's not not a secure income um how can you make it more secure or yeah. how, what is your plan b in the end like yeah. if if this is all going to fail what you what are you going to do um so before i studied before I started to study music, my my parents, they sat down with me and told, talked about this with me and asked me, okay, maybe you should do this. Um, but we didn't, you know, know when I should do it because mm -hmm. I just wanted to first start to study music and see how it's going and how much time this is going to occupy. And as I was used to do lots of practicing and school, like next to it, <laughs> um, I... In the beginning of my music studies, I felt that there's so much free time because I was mainly practicing and I was not so much interested in music theory, music yeah. history and so on, that there was quite a lot of free time still. Hmm. And I thought, um, okay, I can just start, you know, studying something else. But, you know, the, the more I got into music and the more I got into the other study, the more I felt, okay, that, that's, a lot. I'm yeah. <laughs> happy that I finished it. <laughs> okay, so you did finish information technology? Information science, yes. Oh, sorry, yes. Uh, yes, in a bachelor. And and um, that was during your It was, uh, I started, or then? yes, I started after my first bachelor semester yeah. in music. Um, so also, like, it was in the beginning of 2014. And I finished... I think in the, the after the first semester of my master's in, in music, which was after you. So it's uh, actually a beautiful connection for you now. Yes. Doing all <laughs> the things that you're doing with social media and computers.